We are four teachers from Cornerbrook, and we decided to try the flipped classroom model in our two schools. Our focus was in science and mathematics. Let us introduce ourselves. My name is Dwayne Huckster, and I teach at CC Lockton in Cornerbrook. I have been teaching for a total of 22 years, and over that time I've taught grades 3 to 6. And I've been at CC Lockton for the last 15 years, and during that time I've taught grades 4 and 5. This year I've been in a co-teaching situation with Greg, and it was a totally collaborative approach. I'm Greg Labuba. I've been teaching a total of 10 years. Uh, in that time, I had taught anywhere between kindergarten to grade 9. Uh, this is my first year at CC Lachlan, uh, but my second year in a grade 5 classroom. As Dwayne mentioned, uh, he and I co-taught in grade 5 classroom this year, and it was a totally collaborative approach. My name is Bridget and I teach at CC Lachlan. I've been teaching for 24 years. I've taught at junior high, elementary, and primary in both core French and French immersion, as well as the English classroom. I'm currently the literacy numeracy support teacher for grades one to six at CC Lachlan. My role in this project was to provide technical support to set up the flipped classroom. Jennifer Keynes teaches at JJ Elementary in Cornbrook. She's been teaching for 13 years and her teaching experience has been at the university level as well as teaching ESL in South Korea. Uh, once she moved back to Newfoundland, she taught in Hopedale, Labrador, Angley, and then started teaching in Cornerbrook. She's now taught at three schools in the Cornerbrook area and is now teaching at JJ Curling. Most of her experience has been in the grade six classroom. CC Lachlan and JJ Curling are both K-6 schools in Cornerbrook. CC Lachlan is a French immersion and English stream school, and JJ Elementary is an English-only school. The flipped classroom model is a pedagogical model in which typical lecture and homework elements of a course are reversed. Short video lectures are viewed by students at home before the class session, while in-class time is devoted to exercises, projects, or discussions. Jennifer Keynes used Smart Notebook and Smart Recorder to create math lessons, which she posted on her webpage. Students could view the lessons the night before or have access to them prior to the start of classes. This allowed for more time spent on exploration activities or practice activities. The Grade 5 classroom in, at CC Lachlan was made up of 28 students, 11 of whom were on an IEP, two of which were doing an alternate program. We had poor, four pre-referrals, uh, two teachers were co-teaching, Greg and myself, and the students came from a broad range of socioeconomic backgrounds. The Grade 6 classroom at JJ Curling has 21 students. Two of those students are in IEPs, taking alternate programs in reading and writing, but were able to follow the regular math curriculum. This class of students has six teachers. They have different teachers coming for various subjects, and Jennifer taught them math and language arts, as well as being their homeroom teacher. This class uh, was a group of bright, engaged, and uh, good workers, so it was fun and easy to do this project with them. The general focus of the project in the Grade 5 Science was to explore the flipped classroom model to improve student interest in learning through inquiry-based projects and activities that focused on forces in motion. Uh, there was also a focus uh, to present students with a variety of inquiry-based projects ranging from confirmation inquiry to guided inquiry. For the math flip classroom, uh, Jennifer created a variety of uh, activities on using Smart Notebook and Smart Recorder, which she then placed on her website and students had access to these uh, videos at home the night before. This allowed for students to arrive in the classroom ready to begin hands-on activities and discussion activities. And those students who had uh, difficulty with the concept uh, the night before were able to spend more one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher to ask questions. In planning and implementing these units, uh, the Grade 5 Science and Grade 6 Math were able to use curriculum guides to help us to come up with some certain activities. Uh, we were able to purchase a various materials, including texts uh, about forces in motion. Uh, and in those texts, we were able to get a variety of reading levels allowed to allow for differentiation. Dwayne and I were able to search and find some videos appropriate for our lessons, whereas Jennifer was able to 
use Smart Notebook and Smart Recorder to record her own lessons. Uh, from there, uh, we were able to use Simple Machines project books that we ordered to come up with ideas for our lessons, as well as we found some projects online. After much discussion and debate, we came up with the following research questions. What is meant by inquiry-based learning? What is my role as classroom teacher in supporting students in an inquiry-based classroom? How can I structure my classroom to support inquiry-based teaching and learning? The student questions, how will inquiry-based learning affect student motivation? And how will the flipped classroom affect student engagement? Some ethical considerations for this project included the following. We provided a, an information package for parents and students with details of the Teachers in Action project, as well as a permission form for photos and videos of students. Outlined the focus of the objectives as they pertain to science and math and in connection with Teachers in Action. We discussed the proper use of videotaping in the classroom, and if students were uncomfortable, they were not videotaped or photographed. During this project, we had seven and a half release days where we could plan. We started our process back in October and uh, planned uh, through the months uh, up until the end of May. During the implementation, we completed a pre-survey with all students. We created or obtained videos for math and science objectives using a teacher-created website to display the links. And we use stations to allow students to engage in various inquiry-based activities to explore the given objectives. The data was collected using various sources, uh, surveys, notes, student discussions, and observations. The students completed the surveys independently and anonymously. The results were generated automatically in Google Forms. <laughs> Pre- and post-surveys were administered in math. Once the data was collected, we did notice a slight increase in student interest in math, as well as uh, finding it interesting. The thing to note is that the this was a group of students that were already quite engaged, so the difference uh, was slight. Having access to the videos also allowed uh, for parents to be involved. Uh, several parents contacted Jennifer to let them know that uh, they very much appreciated having access to the videos uh, when their child was having difficulty or possibly uh, if they had missed work or um, for whatever reason the parents had access and were understanding what was happening in the math classroom. Just like with the grade six math at JJ Curling, uh, the grade five science group were also asked to complete a pre and post survey. Uh, in the findings there, we found that uh, students recognized uh, the practical use life for life problems within science. Uh, there was a, a great increase there. Uh, we also recognize, or the students actually recognize their own hard work and realized that they were more willing to put the work in when we got into these inquiry-based lessons. Uh, a common theme that we noticed across both schools uh, in both classrooms is uh, their comfort level with asking questions. Our, our survey questions stated or asked, uh, I feel comfortable asking questions in most of my classes. Uh, in both groups, we found that there was a decline in their comfort level with asking questions. Uh, we weren't sure if that was an issue with our question uh, in that it didn't specify math or science and it included all subject areas or if it was the idea of the focus of the teaching model was inquiry-based learning in which they were required to ask questions. So we weren't sure if they needed a little more time to get more comfortable with that area. Some of the results that we noticed, by watching students engage in hands-on activity, we were able to see how students understood the learning objectives and were able to problem solve by using science math vocabulary. It was interesting to watch different groups solve a similar problem in different ways. And during the problem solving, they were respectful of each other's opinion, were willing to persevere until they achieved their goal. The classroom practice shifted. There was a shift in teacher-centered instruction to a student-centered approach. 
and as a result we now feel more comfortable with this unit and feel that the flip classroom model would be beneficial in the future uh, future teaching we also feel that we could now expand this model into other teaching subject areas <laughs> One of the activities we had students uh, describe what they were understanding with forces of motion using an, a, an iPad app called Telegami EDU. Uh, it, with this, they were able to use the science vocabulary and demonstrate their learning. By having uh, the opportunity to access the extra PD time, we were also able to focus on our teaching practices and find ways to make it more student-centered. Having time to learn new technology using Smart Notebook and Smart Recorder enabled us to broaden our use of technology as a teaching tool to create the videos. And having access to these prepared lessons allowed students to revisit material and allowed parents to see what the children were learning in school. Also, having the time to take a unit of science that we were less familiar with enabled us to focus on ways to make it more student-centered based on student inquiry projects. It was uplifting to see students work together to solve problems and persevere when things didn't work. It was even better to see the less motivated students engaged and actually leading the task. Also, with the number of students with particular needs in our class, seeing them gain confidence as they problem solved was a good experience for them. After completing this research project, uh, we, we have come up with future goals. Uh, with the grade six math, uh, a goal is to continue to organize videos for all the lessons throughout the year so that all units contained a flipped classroom component. As well, explore how to implement the flipped classroom model in other areas of the curriculum. For the grade five group, we'd like to continue to explore the flipped classroom model with other science units and begin to record lessons to be used in math as well. We would like to thank Dr. Karen Goodnow Craig Adams and Tom Walsh for their guidance this year. We would also like to thank Hibernia for their financial support.